are high. Let me send this message in the chat right now with the Nearpod if anybody wants to join. Um, funny story, I thought I was live and just no one had joined yet. I didn't realize I hadn't hit start stream because I'm a thousand years old. Um, so sorry I'm late though. I was eating dinner and I had to take a shower and then like today after work I had to run an errand and it took way fucking longer than I thought it would but I'm here now. Okay good. I was about to go turn my AC off because I'm fucking freezing but it just turned itself off. <clears throat> so that's great. Welcome to class. How's everybody doing? How was your day? How was your Wednesday? How we living? How we feeling? What are the vibes? Hi. I'm good. I'm kind of tired, but I'm really good. I've just been like on 100 all day. Like good on 100, but on 100. Oh my god, first time chat. Hi Katie, Nicole. Been waiting for this. Sorry I was late and I'm excited. I've also been waiting for this. I made this like you're a little drunk. That's good. I was drinking last night on stream again. Um, I'm not a huge drinker, though, and I don't like those Trader Joe's margaritas. So I'm going to have to get something else because that's just, like, not really my vibe right now and not really my wavelength. But, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, I keep forgetting, like, you know how you can put on TikTok, like, the little, like, the... See where it's like the pink text over the video, like the little preview thing? I've been trying to be better about putting those on there and I just literally always forget and it's, it's getting to be a problem in my life, honestly. Ugh. I'm gonna go on TikTok Live for a couple seconds. I know I said I was going to stop doing that, but here I am doing that. Live, laugh, loving. Here. Let me move this. Very professional setup I have here. If you didn't already know, it's a very professional setup. Oh my god, it went like 0 to 100 so fast. There were literally like, for the first couple of minutes, there were like 2 or 3 people in there, and then it went to 44 people. Um, how was work? Work was good. Work is going really well. Like, it's hard. Like, I'm just really tired because like, I'm learning a lot, and it's like, I don't know how to do anything quick, you know what I mean? Like I have to think about everything that I'm doing and so it's like just tiring, but it's good. Like I like the job. It seems like people are happy with my work, all that stuff. Sorry, TikTok Live is like yelling at me weird. Um, do you like have homework for your new job? No, not at all. I actually get paid by the hour. Um, so I get paid by the hour, so I shut my computer. I do take my computer with me just because like most of the people I work with are not in the same office every day. That's, like, rare for my, for my like, company that I'm in the same office every single day. Um, so it's, like, everyone takes their computer home, so, like, they don't want me to leave it, like, out. So, like, I don't need to take it home, but I do just because I'm responsible for it, so I don't want to just, like, leave it out in the open. Um, <clears throat> but I've never done any work at home. Occasionally, like, I'll answer a text. Like, if someone needs something and they text me because, like, a lot of people work till 6 and I work till 5, so sometimes I'll answer text messages until 6 just because, like, I know they're still working. When are you uploading the previous stream? So the one that I did yesterday, I just uploaded. It For some reason, it literally took, like, 7 hours to process. I started it this morning, and normally, like, if I start it before I go to sleep, it's done by the morning, but this morning it, like, hadn't done anything, and so I started it over, and it didn't finish until, like, I got home from work, which is crazy. Um, but if anyone wants to join the Nearpod, it's in the chat right now. Um, have you made friends at work? Yeah. It's like good vibes. Most of the people I work with are like cool and they like want friends and want to hang out and like, you know what I mean? My eyelashes look weird because I just got out of the shower and there's like soap on them. Um, I'm so, hi, TikTok live. I'm on Twitch right now and I'm about to just be on Twitch because it's distracting me having two of these at the same thing or at the same time. So I'm going to be talking about like the history of how the U.S. stole Hawaii and it was really shady and yada, yada, yada. So if you're on TikTok Live and you want to join Twitch, the link is in my link tree. Um, I'm going to hop off of here in like a couple minutes just because it's like kind of stressing me out. Oh my God, thanks for subscribing, PTKXX898. Thanks. And um, <clears throat> oh, I can't breathe. Are most of your coworkers older than people with kids because mine are and I get sad because they don't realize how hilarious I am? No, like we definitely laugh. Like most of them don't have kids. I would say like the most common demographic of my workplace is like 28 to like 35 married, no kids. 
is kind of the vibe. So, like, I'm definitely one of the younger ones, but it's, like, good vibes. You do tech things for a real estate company, right? Yeah, so I'm, like, an office support person. Like, I do administrative stuff, and I also, like, help the agents get all their technology set up. So, like, when they, like, join, I, like, help them set up their computer and, like, answer questions. And, like, they call me if something's not working and, like, stuff like that. And I just help them. So it's, like, kind of customer service, kind of administrative, which I really like. Um, what is Nearpod? So Nearpod is what I'm going to have, like, the slide thingies on, which is fun because then it has games and stuff. So there's games in here and, like, you can interact with it. So if you just want to watch it and you don't feel like interacting, don't join the Nearpod because there's, like, it's just not 100% necessary. But if you want to, like, interact with the slides, you can join Nearpod. And for those of you on <clears throat> TikTok, you, you need to join Twitch to get any of what I'm saying right now. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll send it in the chat again if anyone wants to use it. You can. If you're watching on your phone, probably not the vibe. But let me go see what people are saying. I put a would you rather question and let me move. Okay, just streaming on a laptop with no second monitor is hilarious. I do have a second monitor, but it's just like my computer can't handle that, if you get what I mean. Like it just can't handle streaming and being hooked up to a second monitor at the same time. So my would you rather question is would you rather have an awful tattoo that you hated on your arm or an amazing tattoo that you loved on your face. Bad arm, bad tattoo on the arm, 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 bad arm, awful tattoo on my arm as long as it's funny, arm, amazing tattoo on my face. I couldn't handle having a tattoo I didn't like. Pythagorean telescope, I completely agree. I would go tattoo I didn't like on my face, absolutely. fucking -lutely. Also, peace and love TikTok. I'm gonna hop off of here because one, my phone is dying. Two, I'm not loving this angle. And three, I like can't keep up with two chats at the same time. My brain can't handle it. But come on to Twitch. The link is in my bio. It's free. If you don't have to pay for anything, you can just watch and hang out. Uh, love you. Bye. Have a good night. Okay. <clears throat> arm. 100% arm. Arm. Tattoo on my face because I like pissing my family off. So one tattoo that I think would be so cute on me, like I really think it would look so cute, is like right here. I want like... A little cupcake just like a cute one that's colorful like it's impossible to do something as detailed as I want that tiny as a tattoo but I think that would be so cute or like a little flower I just think it would be such a vibe <clears throat> would you ever do a kahoot yeah I would definitely do a kahoot I can do that I should start doing that maybe Ooh, I have an idea if I ever like if one week I don't have time to make the Nearpod or I just like can't think of something and I still want to stream um, I can just do like a trivia Kahoot because I have a bunch of them that I've made and I actually have some that's it's different than Kahoot but it's like way better than Kahoot in my opinion. I want something in front of my ear not behind but I'm worried people will judge me. I mean I don't know I feel like it depends what kind of people you're around. I think it'd be cute I wouldn't judge you but it takes a lot for me to judge someone for their tattoo you know like the tattoo has to be like really questionable for me to feel a type of way about it. Oh my god, this is so funny. I have little auto moderation things on because people were being idiots and annoying, so I had to turn on moderation stuff. Um, but I accidentally tattooed my earlobe because I was trying to pierce it, marked it with eyeliner, and it didn't go all the way through because I'm a little bitch. That sucks. <clears throat> my cousin, she's 15, she stays piercing her own ears. I told her, I was like, you're going to give yourself hepatitis. Like, truly, I'm deeply concerned. And they keep getting infected, and it's it's just really stresses me out because she'll like pierce them on like Instagram Live, and I'm like, "Hi, do you, do you want me to come over? Like, what's going on?" I'm obsessed with her. I'm literally so obsessed with her. She posted. She wouldn't mind me telling you this because I asked her if I could put it on Twitter, and she didn't care. Um, she posted on her story. She like didn't doesn't shave her legs she um oh my god the viewing has changed so much she like doesn't shave her legs doesn't shave her armpits any of that and then she posted on her story that she was at a waxing place and then she posted like the location and then was like can't wait for my male validation and i was like <laughs> i love that your brain already works this way it's literally iconic oh my god. i'm gonna send the nearpod again in case anybody wants it but i want to go ahead and get into it all right so, history with me, I put the same slide at the beginning of everything. That kind of stuff makes me nauseous. So I put the same slide at the beginning of everything. This is not a complete history. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but it's like obviously a big topic. 
She is so liberated. She's more liberated than all of us. Um, like I said, Hawaii, the U.S. stealing Hawaii is obviously a really big topic. There's a lot of detail to it. We're not going to talk about everything, but we're going to talk about a lot of things um, and take everything I say with a grain of salt because I was not there and I am also not Hawaiian. So, um, but first thing I want to do is talk about context. The U.S. is like not fucking close to Hawaii at all. I don't know if this is just because I grew up in like Yeehaw, Georgia, so I just like didn't fucking learn anything. Um, I always, like, as a kid, I thought Hawaii was, like, right off the coast of California. Like, I thought it was, like, a hop, skip away. Um, no, it's, like, fully in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Like, absolutely in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The ad I got today was for the COVID vaccine, so I'll accept it. I need to figure out the ads. Oh, my God, is that why that's happening? My views, like, dropped and then went back up right away. I bet it's the ads. I'll start, like, pausing when that happens. The COVID vaccine. Yeah, I need to turn off ads. I need to figure out a way to have subscribers but not ads. And I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to try. But yeah, Hawaii is in the middle of the fucking ocean. You can see it's right there. Um, oh, shit. So the flight from Honolulu, Hawaii to Los Angeles, California is five hours and ten minutes. It's your chance we are able to find it to be able to exploit them, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't know how I just got here. Oh, hi. Um, I grew up in Alaska and always thought Hawaii was right by me. Yeah, like, <laughs> the way the U.S. teaches maps is so fucking inaccurate. It's insane to me. Um, so the flight from Honolulu to Los Angeles, California, is over five hours. That's a very long flight. This, like, the group of islands is nowhere near the continental United States. So the early history of Hawaii is that... Um, the first inhabitants reached the islands in 300 CE. Uh, the, they had contact with the Tahitians. They had, like, you know, like any society, they had conflicts, they had war, they had fights, things like that. We also love to teach maps and show white countries as being huge, bro, literally. Yeah, yeah, Hawaii is really out here. Hawaii is all the way the fuck out here. Thank you for the follows, Ahathias and Cricket the Bug. Thanks, thanks. I thought it was closer to Japan, but nope. No, Hawaii is actually one of the most isolated places in the world, like in terms of being furthest away from other masses of land. That's the same distance as Ohio to California. Damn. That's, that checks out. Like, now that I think about it, that sounds absolutely correct. I never thought about it that way, but damn. Um, but yeah, so... People have been living in Hawaii for a long, 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 long time. Their culture was mainly an oral culture, meaning like spoken, like not necessarily like writ writing things down and like keeping records in a written format. It was more like their history and their culture was passed down through speaking. Um, they had really good navigation methods. They were very good with like using natural resources to, to create tools and things like that. Because obviously if you're on a small island, like you have what you have. It's not like you can like go run over somewhere else really quickly. So... <clears throat> People have been living in Hawaii, surviving, thriving for many, many years. So now we're going to talk about the arrival of Europeans. I know, obviously, that this meme is not about Hawaiians, but I just felt like the meme fit, so I wanted to include it, but I wanted to really differentiate that I'm aware that this is not the same group of people. You could drive from the top of the UK to the bottom in a shorter time than you could go top to the bottom of Texas. The US has no business being that big. One thing that I think we really need to discuss as the United States of hell is that like empires always fall and like when empires get too big, they fall. Like the Roman empire fell. I might be a little ignorant about this. I'm not an expert on this. So just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But like if what I learned was correct, one of the first things to fail in the Roman empire was like the roads and the systems and the transportation and all of that. And like, that's what's going on right now. Like. The reason empires fail is just because you like can't coordinate things across that big of a space with that many people because every area is so different and every community has different needs that it just like doesn't make sense to do that. History always repeats itself. The U.S. is in its flop era. The U.S. really is in its flop era. It really, really, really is. Like truly the U.S. is in her flop era. Um, but yeah, this meme, these white men are dangerous. Ooh. Oh, and boy, in Michigan, our roads are mega fucked up. I took Latin in high school and can confirm. Okay, I took Latin too. Good. Is that where I learned that? We have the worst infrastructure from West Virginia, aka 49th in infrastructure. Is it different now because of the internet, though? I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. The internet is crazy. Um, well, I do know. Hint, capitalism, but you know what I mean. So the internet's crazy. My mom, like, has her own business, and in, like, the early 2000s, she was like, oh, I think the internet, like, might be a big deal. 
and she met this guy that was like a web designer and she was like hey i want you to make me a website which was like not normal like people didn't have personal websites um and he was like yeah for sure and she paid him to and she said that he told her like that the internet was going to be more revolutionary than the printing press and she was like no you're crazy that's not true and he was like no the internet is going to change society more than the printing press did mark my words and then when that happened she bought me and my sister's names like our web address names she set up emails in our names and all that stuff because she was like hmm what if he's right and the internet is more powerful than the printing press and in my opinion i do think that the internet has changed the world more than the printing press did um the printing press is like being able to copy books and written things instead of like handwriting them all but yeah i just get so distracted but i like it okay so james cook discovered i'm using discovered in quotes because there were already people there do you use the website and email that she made you i use the email i've had the same email address since i was a kid i don't use the website i have it set up so it's like just nothing and no one can take it um but i don't use it now i'm writing a lesson plan right now and i wrote hawaii in every place i went to book canada same difference hawaii canada what's what's the real difference here okay so do, do, do. And let me actually make this more zoomed in. Oh my God, that's literally so much better. Let me move the arrows, sorry. Okay, Captain James Cook, the British explorer and navigator, is generally credited with finding Hawaii, but, you know, other people were there, Ovs. So let's talk about his unaliving. He was killed. He was he's fully dead i mean obviously he's dead but it was like not of natural causes and let me move my mic closer to me i feel like you probably couldn't hear me that well sorry i always forget about my mic okay so cook had entered during i don't know how to pronounce this so i'm not going to try to it's like a holiday that's a traditionally peaceful time because it's like a holiday where they're like giving thanks and things like that i believe um so he was given food and gifts and treated as an honored guest because he was there during a holiday the only american on cook's voyage has like a detailed record of these events um and doo -doo -doo. i feel like i missed something is this out of order what's happening right now okay so this one guy on the crew had very very detailed of like account of these events so we know that they had peaceful interactions and we know that like when he was there originally the meme <laughs> it would it's a good me <laughs> um we know when he was there at this first time it was like pretty okay vibes if you get what i'm saying so then on another one of his visits one of his captains accused this native chief of stealing a boat but my thing is like why would they steal your boat they had their own boats um the boat was soon found to be unstolen and like of course he didn't fucking steal it. Like, of course it's a false accusation that started this. I sent this meme to my friend without context. That means it's a good one. Thank you. I didn't make it. I found it. The meme is what I feel like is <laughs> late stage capitalism feels like. It really is. Colonizer 101. Be nice the first time. Retweet to that. Retweet to that. Be nice the first time. That's like, when you say history repeats itself, that's the prime example right there. So, um... Yeah, so false accusation. Cook himself tried to barter for wood with the natives, um, and the natives were, like, mortified at that because it was, like, the wood was from, like, a sacrificial, like, burial thing. So the fact that he was like, hey, I'll trade you for that wood, and it's, like, something that's very important to their, like, religion and culture, obviously they're not going to fuck with that, which is very respectable. Like, if you ask someone to make tradesies and they're like, absolutely not, the appropriate action is to be like, all right, cool, sorry, sorry for asking, that was out of line. But instead of apologizing or just doing nothing, he took the wood anyway against their will um, and then tried to lure one of their chiefs onto his ship and hold him hostage in order to induce good behavior among the natives. So he basically was like, I'm going to take your stuff and then I'm going to kidnap your chief and then you'll have to listen to me because I have your chief and it's totally going to work perfectly, which it absolutely did not. So obviously, like, tempted or um, tensions mounted. Like, obviously, it's not good vibes right now. Um, and Cook actually ended... Cook fired the first shot um, and then his men quickly shot more natives. But Cook ended up getting stabbed in the chest by a native chief. And, like, to me, it's like they had guns at a knife fight and still lost. Like, how do you have a gun at the knife fight and still lose? 
How does that happen? Bruh, why do you need wood that bad? The East Coast was literally a forest at that time. Exactly. It's like, you needed the wood fucking right now. You needed the wood right now. You had to have it right fucking now. Um, so he got stabbed, which is deserved, in my opinion. Like, you, you literally stole some. You tried to trade these. Then they said no. Then you stole it. Then you kidnapped their chief. Then you fired first, and then they stabbed you. It's like, fuck around and find out. What do you think was going to fucking happen? What the fuck did you think is going to happen? Why is this literally a preschool? What do you think was going to happen? Um, yeah, so basically he got stabbed, and then the, his men shot a bunch more of the native Hawaiians. So like things are really fucking bad vibes now at this point. Um, here's another meme. Does anyone know what this gif is from? What show is this from? This is a quiz. All barbarism, no logic. No, literally. Because, like, you're from Europe and America, so, like, you can get wood from other places. It's fucking fine. Parks and Rec again. Yes. Love Parks and Rec. Big fan of the Parks and Rec. Bobby Newport's. Bobby Newport's never had a real job in his life. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. That's what made me think of this gif and want to put it in here um oh, such a good class and here's a meme that i found from this page it's like oc history memes um of course you can hear the gif i just screamed it what time period are we in Ooh. so right now we're talking about like history of hawaii i think i put the year on here i don't remember it off the top of my head um yeah so this happened in like 1778 and then the following years so 17 late 1700s is what we're in right now i'm not sure if this is accurate i could not find a ton of information proving that it was accurate or inaccurate um but i thought this meme was really funny um and it, they didn't have a gun obviously that's just a meme how the fuck do these idiots find hawaii that's what i'm saying that is what i'm I'm fucking saying like what were y'all doing out there what were y'all doing out in the middle of the fucking ocean like teaching imperialism on monday this lesson couldn't have had better timing you can copy it if you email me i will send this to you i don't know if you should include everything that i was including i don't really know the vibes um but i will literally send it to you it's one of my favorite topics to teach <clears throat> so there's a lot more memes in this one i felt like i've been like too schooly and not like fun enough which like no one wants to be in school so like we should just be looking at memes you know what i mean so this one is less information heavy and more meme heavy i'm hoping that y'all are into that another great meme this is a tweet i don't know that person at all i just found this tweet the memes are your best work so far thank you i put a lot of effort into them um if you're my boss and you're watching this this is fully a joke but i did spend like a lot of time at work working on these memes like a lot of time like, not always working on them, but, like, just thinking about them and trying to make them their best selves. You know what I mean? But, yeah, how did these motherfuckers find Hawaii? That's one thing I need to know. Thanks, everyone, for the uh, follows. Ornamental Hermit, Hail Satan, Gang Bang. Oh, I hope I don't get, like, in trouble for saying that. Becca Lucky, all the follows. How are wooden ships waterproof to explore back in the day? Okay, so here's the thing about ships is, like, I understand like, it's a buoyancy, it's air, that's how they're able to float. But, like, I see cruise ships a lot because of where I live. Sometimes they, like, dock so that I drive past them. And, like, how does that float? Like, I, the wooden ones make more sense to me. Like, I don't really understand how it's, oh, shit. I don't really understand how it's waterproof. But, like, I get how it can float. But, oh, someone said whale blubber. Interesting. And, like, rub, like to rubberize it, that makes sense. I love the memes, but I also love info-heavy streams. This one does still have a lot of info, don't worry. But anyway, back to cruise ships. How do they stay? Like, it's all metal. I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how they all fit to, like, that shouldn't work. It should be, like, I literally cried thinking about how ships float. I'm about to cry. Like, I mean, it really stresses me out because I feel like, isn't the bottom hollow or something? But I feel like no matter how hollow it is, if you have a whole ass hotel and like kitchens and restaurants and water slides on top of it, like, it just doesn't seem big enough. Like, it doesn't seem like the bottom hollow part is like proportionate to the top. Like, 
I don't understand. <laughs> it stresses me out. I will literally never understand plan planes, boats, or why we can't print more money. I don't even want someone to explain it to me. I don't care. It doesn't make sense. That's how I feel. And this is how I... <laughs> the crying over ships floating is why you teach me. <laughs> okay, but this is why I'm afraid of planes and um, boats is because, like, I feel like one day physics is just going to realize that that shouldn't be happening. Like, I feel like one day a switch is going to flip. And, like, the world is going to be like, what the fuck? That shouldn't work. And just, like, all the planes are going to fall out of the sky. Because that shouldn't work. That should not work. You mean to tell me this giant-ass metal box doesn't sink? Right? <laughs> like, how does, how does it not sink? I don't understand. My only knowledge of cruise ships is the sweet life on deck. So, I don't know. That was a great show. I loved that show. Are you okay? No. No, I'm not okay because I don't understand planes and boats. What about spaceships? Don't get me started. That one actually makes a little more sense to me because, like, I get how it, like, rocket launches out. Like, the power of the rocket launcher makes it go out of the atmosphere and then there's no, like, no gravity. Like, that I'm more on board with. I'm more on board with space, not rockets. You know what I mean? Like, the explosion at the bottom. Like... I'm more on board with space travel than I am with cruise ships. I'm going to be honest from a logical perspective. I've also never understood how they make bridges. I can't get into that right now. I cannot get into bridges right now. We can't talk about this. I'm a mechanical engineer who makes planes. It's Nessar 98. Can you explain like how, how does, how does it stay up there? Planes make so much sense to me. Boats do not, no clue. How the fuck do rockets land? I thought they just left them up there and came down in like a little pod. I don't know. I'm not trying to go through an existential. <laughs> Please move on before we all spiral. Sorry, I just spit all over myself. With no gravity, how does it still orbit us? Is there some but less? Yes, I think you're right. I think they go in the ocean. So sometimes this, the, the space things, they come out and then fall in the ocean. Like I've seen that. You're not wrong. I don't think it's an accident when that happens. I just think yeah, where did Bezos land? We have to move on from this. Satellites don't make sense to me. We, the planes stand on the air. We cannot talk about this anymore. I'm sorry. I'm like guest lecture from the chat. <laughs> they use the triangle shape, which makes bridges because it holds a lot of weight. What? Okay, we're moving on from this. We're getting back to Hawaii because I cannot do this. I'm going to spiral like fully. Okay, this is a poll. So if you are not on Nearpod, and you want to vote and stuff, click the link in the chat. That's how you vote by like being on the link in the chat. So if you want to join, you can, but you don't have to. So thoughts on James Cook. Was he just a dude trying his best in the times? Is he an asshole or no thoughts head empty? Planes got taken out by the Bermuda Triangle. I don't trust them. We can't, we can't do the Bermuda Triangle right now. I can do a stream about that at a later date, but we can't get into that right now. Fun fact. Um, when I was a child, I had like a hyper fixation on a few things. One was the Bermuda Triangle. One was the San Francisco earthquake from the 1800s that like killed a fuck ton of people. And one was the Dust Bowl. I was so fixated on these three things for years, for years. That's all I fucking cared about. Um, Titanic. So many people, it was the Titanic. I dabbled in having a Titanic fixation. I've definitely dabbled in being obsessed with the Titanic, but it just never scratched that itch like the Dust Bowl. It really just didn't. We can't get into it. Very next words. Fun fact. <laughs> What's the dust hole? Mm, nothing makes sense out of this metal float. Mine was King Henry VIII. I don't know why to this day. <laughs> Love to meet some special history interests. So the dust bowl, basically it was the middle of the Great Depression. So no one had any money. And like, we didn't have very sustainable farming. Like the farming practices in the Midwest were just like really not good. And so the like soil was getting really, really, really dusty. And then like there were really bad windstorms. So it was picking up all the dust and like fucking people shit up. Like when I say it was bad, it was so, so bad. Like tons of people would die and suffocate from dust. It would destroy people's houses and their farms. A lot of people died of starvation because like, they couldn't leave and like 
they had no money for food because it was the Great Depression. Is in like the Grapes of Wrath? Yeah, the Grapes of Wrath. Like the people were like escaping the Dust Bowl. I'm sure if you wanted, we'd love a stream for each of those hyperfixations. We watched a documentary that was hella dramatic with the Dust Bowl, and it was the funniest shit. Stop. I thought you meant decimal as in math. No, not decimal. Dust Bowl. Okay, I want to see the results of this poll. So far, B is winning. He's an asshole. I agree, because he had no fucking business being over there. Here's a near pot again if anyone wants to vote in this. Didn't the Dust Bowl block out the sun? Yeah, and sometimes it did. Farming in the Midwest is still pretty not good. That is true. Becca Lucky, thank you for the first time chat, and that is accurate. Um, but yeah, so our consensus right now is that James Cook is just an asshole. Some of us are feeling no thoughts, head empty. We've all been there. All good. So before we get into like the really shady shit about the U.S., I want to give you a little bit of information about like before Hawaii was colonized. So like this is from like a Hawaii history website that was like a like a tourism government website. So I'm assuming this is going to be pretty accurate. Um, over 1,500 years ago, the Polynesians arrive after navigating the oceans using the stars. James Cook, that's who we were talking about. And then you can see various different, um, like, dynasties ruling and things like that and, like, different events, like this one right here in 18... 19, um, the sun defies tradition of men and women eating separately at a feast, which leads to abolishment of the taboo system. Like, Hawaiian history, this is an important one right here. 1820, the first star navigation is fascinating to me. Um, trying to figure out if normal people have nerdy hyperfixations or if it's just our weirdos that spend free time during learning history. I think both. Okay, but 1820, this one's important. The first missionaries arrive to Hawaii. The first, a missionary is like someone who goes to spread religion. So this basically means like a bunch of white dudes showed up and were like, hey, we want to talk to you about the Bible. So this is like the 1820 version of like a mission trip. Like, you know, when people spend thousands of dollars to like go to the middle of nowhere in Guatemala and like build a school and like contribute nothing else. Um... That is like the same vibes as these. Boo, tomatoes, I'm throwing tomatoes at missionaries. Yeah. So same vibes. Missionaries are there. And then this is important too. Eight mission hate fuels my fire. Yeah, the fucking, it's just, just like, I get if you want to help, but like maybe instead of us paying five fucking grand to fly you there, we could just buy the supplies and then like pay the people that already live there that need employment to do it like that seems more logical to me we'd cut out a lot of transportation cost and be able to do more stuff so i don't know it just seems like that's a logical solution to me voluntourism that's what it is and like if you just want to go on a trip to the middle of nowhere and paint a school that's fine but call it what it is you know what I mean? Like, if someone is willing to have you come paint a school in their town, and you're just like, yeah, I'm going here to do this as a tourist, that's fine, as long as everyone's into it. Whatever. Girlies in the South love to do that shit. Yeah, I'm from Georgia, and it's like, my whole timeline is like, missing my babies so much, miss these babies in Guatemala, and I'm like, bruh, that child has attachment issues, and sees a different tourist every single week. Like, that's not... Y'all don't have the bond that you think you do. Pretty sure Jesus would want us to help the people in our own areas. Pretty sure Jesus would want us to help people in our own areas before spending money to help people who don't want our help. Yeah, literally, exactly. I will say, though, some of my extended family moved from Georgia to Ohio because there's a huge concentration of Mormons there in Ohio. Really? It's really damaging psychologically to the kids. Yeah, it really is fucking those kids all the way up it's also cringy when they use the citizens for photo ops yeah overall very bad vibes <clears throat> okay so more history stuff right here just so you can see like even after the missionaries were there and even after the um jesus death looks at people like what the fuck that's not what i meant in the bible <laughs> so even after the missionaries were there and even 
and half plantations started opening like the hawaiian people were still really controlling their own government as you can see like they had their own government they had their own culture they had all these things they changed the capital multiple times it was called the hawaiian kingdom um and then in the 1850s this part's important so with hawaii's plantation production on the rise a need for more labor is realized the first workers are recruited from china workers also make their way from islands of japan korea the philippines and portugal so now we're starting to see like that really staunch capitalist influence of like bringing in laborers from other areas to work these plantations my favorite mission propaganda is california schools making all fourth graders make a model of a mission and teach nothing critically go imperialism why do i keep spitting on myself i'm surprised california's doing that i thought they like had their shit together a little more than that in california education you know what i mean Okay, so these are, I just like picked some random things to show you how like truly autonomous their government was. This is one of the um, ambassadors. So this guy's job was to go to other countries on behalf of Hawaii. You can see Kingdom of Hawaii envoy to the United States, France, and Great Britain. He was in office for a couple of years. He was not the only person that had this job, but I just wanted to show an example. And he's like the one that had the most documentation. Um, I just wanted to show an example to show like, I think a lot of people have this misconception that before the U.S. took over Hawaii, it was just like a bunch of people like walking around on the beach with no government and like living off the land when in reality, like that's not the case. They had a very like autonomous functioning government. They had their own money. This is a Hawaiian dollar. You can see it's like a full coin the way that we have coins in the U.S. Like this was in 1883, like they were completely their own country. You can see user, Kingdom of Hawaii, it was its own country. Um, and then, oh wait, I forgot one part that'll make this meme make sense. In 1882, this is the Eloni, I think I'm saying that incorrectly, but I'm not sure. Um, palace is the official residence of the Hawaiian monarchs. So the monarchs is like the kings and queens, like people in charge. The palace was way ahead of its time and it had the most up-to-date amenities before the White House and before Buckingham Palace, including the first electric lights, indoor plumbing, and even a telephone. So when you have indoor plumbing, phones, electric lights in your palace before the Americans and British. I made this meme from scratch. I had to reset my Canva password to make this meme. Truly, madly, deeply had to reset it. Let me look at the chat. Du, 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 du. Feminist Queen 99, thanks for the follow. I need Dr. Pepper. Slay! Brits and Americans have always been gross and dirty. So I went to like, I went to London. And I I was looking at this castle it's like the main one like it's like the i don't remember what it's called but it's like the main one and they were talking about how people used to like shit outside the window it was like they would literally like stick their ass out the window and like shit down the side of the castle because they just like i don't know couldn't be bothered to do something that wasn't that um thanks for teaching me things love you you're welcome fun, queen. fun fact because hawaii is made up of multiple um volcanic eruptions over years the plates are always moving it's like a map of the history volcanic activity of that area oh that's cool okay pineapple quality meme love the commitment thank you i'm very committed to the memes material girl and this is a picture of the palace like at that time oh my computer is breathing that's so mortifying why wouldn't we cover that up like we cover up half the awful shit that we do so it wasn't like an official tour guide that told me that it was like when I was in London, we visited some of my mom's friends, and they're the ones that told us that they were British, so I don't know if it's true or not. I'd only ever live in a castle that has indoor plumbing. We gatekeep slavery, but tell people about chamber pots. Oh my god. Ew, what is on this? It's like a chunk of the plastic in the bottle. Ugh, okay. Let's continue. Let's focus for once in my life. So, Europeans in Hawaii, sing it to the tune of that song. What is this? Why is this on my drink? Okay, so the initial appearance of Cook was followed by an intermittent contact with the West, meaning like European people, like Americans, white people, like that general side of the world. Um, and then one of their kings was even using European military technology to emerge as the outstanding leader where he became like the one that was in control of the Hawaiian kingdom so it's like even throughout the years they were interacting with other countries so like 
they had a lot of interactions with European countries and America before they became their own, like, or before the U.S. took them over and they became a state. So when they were their own country, they were interacting with other countries and, like, having relations with those other countries. Um, you can see in the early 19th century, American whaling, like the killing of whales, began wintering in Hawaii and the islands were visited frequently by explorers, traders, and adventurers. So it's like people are going there. People know it exists. It's definitely a thing. Um, and then in 1820, the first of 15 companies of New England missionaries arrived. That's what I was talking about. The missionaries are there. By the middle of the century, there were frame houses, horse-drawn vehicles, churches, schools, taverns, and mercantile establishments. That's like little stores. Um, a written language had been introduced. Remember I talked, said earlier how it's like mostly an oral history. Now there's a written language being introduced. European and American skills and religious beliefs, mainly Protestant and Roman Catholic, had been important or imported, and Hawaiian culture was basically forever changed. So they whole, so they were like a whole ass country, and we just fucking took over. Yeah, like I said, like they had their own coins, they had their own money system, they had their own government, they had diplomats, they had different functions of their government, like all of that. Hold on, someone said something in the chat. Oh. oh, someone's talking about Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling. Um, no, because the ocean is so, so big. How do they not get lost? That's what, even now, how do we not get lost? Like when pilots are flying the plane, how do they not get lost? They can't see anything down there. I don't want to think about sea navigation. <laughs> oh. I like this meme too. We did it, Patrick. We saved the city. White people after destroying a rich historic culture and replacing it with boring art and forced religion. The pilot just whips out snap maps to change the location. <laughs> the ocean is so, literally so scary. I'm terrified of the ocean, which is ironic because I love to swim and I love swimming in the ocean, but I will not go past where I can't touch. The ocean is terrifying. The ocean is absolutely terrifying. Did you mean Lake Lanier? Wait, who's talking about Lake Lanier? That's like near where I grew up and it's terrifying to me. So many people die in Lake Lanier, which is horrible, but I think it's haunted. We keep getting too close to existential topics. We're just edging existentialism, but really the ocean is terrifying. It's so deep and like, I think mermaids might be real because how would we know? I feel the same way about aliens and mermaids because like, how would we know? How would we know? I don't think they're like, I don't think they look the way we think they do, but how would we know? Edging existentialism is the best way to Twitch stream. The ocean has no business being that deep. It doesn't. I think there might be aliens down there. Okay. So I saw this tweet the other day and it was like the most terrifying alien occurrence would be if aliens came down and then did something in the ocean for like a couple minutes and then they just left. That would be so fucking scary. We've only explored 5% of the ocean, the Marianas Trench. I can't think about the Marianas Trench for too long. I really can't. I physically cannot think about the Marianas Trench for too long. <laughs> Horrifying. I'm not even that scared of sharks. So this is what you do if a shark is attacking you. I've looked into this because I like to be in the ocean a lot. Um, if a shark is... So one, try to not let it bite you because obviously that's going to hurt. If you see it near you, like this is the shark head, you have to like, where's like an item? This is the shark head, you have to like bop it, like right here, like between its eyeballs. Like if this is its head, like bop it. So like you can use your hand or if you can find like a stick or something, just bop it and it'll like disorient the fuck out of it and then it'll go away. However, I personally, if the shark is not touching me, I'm not going to touch it. Like, I'm not going to make the first move. That's what I've read online, but I'm not making the first move. Like, I'm not throwing the first punch with a shark. So, I've never seen the ocean IRL. I don't know what to do. I, I saw a shark because they're scary, but not scary. I couldn't promise that. I was in the ocean and saw a shark, and it was really close to me, and it was, like, this big. So, it was, like, it would have hurt like a bitch, but it wasn't that big. But, like, I've actually swam. I've actually been in the ocean with sharks multiple times, um bop it twist it pull it i've been in the ocean with sharks multiple times so i've seen a shark when i've been swimming and they're they really don't care like they're really unbothered about humans so like if you see one just don't really move that much and try and like slowly move away from it in like a very relaxed fashion and it's gonna just kind of fuck off they don't really care about you but let me 
we get back. So they're just vibing. Dolphins are scarier than sharks. But anyway, if the shark bites you, what you're supposed to do is take your nails, like your fingers, and stab into its eyeballs and it will leave. Or into its gills. And it will like let go of you and fuck off. Allegedly. Is what I heard. I personally think if I'm being bit by a shark actively, I'm going to do anything I can because it's like I literally have nothing to lose. But yeah, so if you ever get bit by a shark, think of this moment. That's what you do to dangerous men. Exactly. You can handle sharks and predator men the same way. Haha. Uh-huh. Okay. Speaking of dangerous men, these white men are dangerous, continue. So after the arrival of missionaries, a small but powerful white majority began to exert greater and greater power over the Hawaiian monarchy. The monarchy urged upon the the king a written constitution that guaranteed private ownership of property. So basically they were like, hey, you need to write a constitution and you need to have um, private property in it. Sorry, some of the mod the mod filters are kicking in. So like, like you need a constitution and you need to have private property. But what you have to keep in mind is like the Hawaiian culture doesn't really work that way in terms of like this little piece of land is mine. Like it's a more like communal and like familial culture. So like it just it doesn't make a ton of sense for their constitution and government to be set up that way just because it's like not really how they did things. So white people when any one has a different form of government or property from them. I expect everything to go my way. Does the monarchy still exist today or did that dissolve when it was taken over by the U.S.? It dissolved. I'm going to get into the details of it, but yeah, it's dissolved. Wow, they really forced capitalism on them. Yeah, so white people. We divided up the land into little pieces and one person owns one piece. Hawaiians who have a communal culture and don't view land as something to own. That's the other thing is like they value nature a lot more than like white American culture does. So they're like, they don't view land as something to like exploit like it's resources but it's not like something to like make barren so it's just like they don't view it as like something to like conquer and something to own in the way that we do um so it's just like not it doesn't really make like the cultures just don't have the same like views around it and it's not gonna work you know what i mean epic indigenous communist moment that's why european the worst hikey loki they view nature as a relative. You can't own a relative. Exactly. That's a way to look at it. Thank you for saying that. I think that's a much better description than I gave. It's like something that you get things from and give things to, and there's like a relationship there, but it's not like exploitative. I read recently that land ownership wasn't a concept until English made it up and spread it everywhere a few centuries ago. Exactly. That's true. Um, technically, I think there's still a monarch in Hawaii by bloodline, but it's been so long it doesn't really count. Yeah, it's like... They don't have political power, but I'm sure, like, people know, like, their family lineage. You know what I mean? Um, Okay, so let's get into some of the shadier things, if this will load. So, so far, we've covered Hawaii before U.S. intervention. Like, this is before America is super involved in doing everything. If you have a question, a meme, a joke, anything, put it in the chat. Put it on Nearpod. It's up to you. Whatever. I put the Nearpod in the chat again in case wants it isn't there like a very small part of one island that's inhabited by sovereign hawaiians i don't know i haven't heard about that maybe if anyone knows about that let me know oh i'm like something's happening to me i mean obviously oh someone made a post and then deleted it there is okay shelby neiman tell us what's going on with that Where is that part? Which island is it on? This reminded me of how the U.S. didn't intern the Japanese in Hawaii because the Hawaiian economy would have collapsed. I had no idea about that. I absolutely think that's, like, believable and true. There's one small island where only native Hawaiians are allowed, but from what I've heard, there's very few people left because they've all moved to more populated areas. That's sad. Aren't the Queen's descendants somewhere out there? What are they doing right now? I'm sure they're out there. I don't know what they're doing right now. Um, I'll give people more time. Yes, natives only. Interesting. 
I'll see if anyone else wants to hop onto Nearpod and do any other things. Do your prerogative. I'm gonna give people a couple more minutes here and then we're gonna move on. Let me catch up in this. Thanks for the follows. I really feel like a boomer using this app. Like, truly, madly, I feel like such a boomer. Go away. Oh, I figured it out. Yay. Thank you for saying my last name correctly. I'm so bad with names. That's, like, one of my biggest weaknesses is names. All right. The United States has entered the chat. I told you I put a lot more memes in this one. This one's much meme heavier. One of my students actually found this meme. Like, like, not the United States has entered, the, but the new foe has appeared. Challenger approaching. <laughs> this is the opposite of a party in the USA. This is a genocide in the USA. Miley Cyrus would be disappointed. Tomato, 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 literally. That's literally all world history <laughs> since 1914. Oh man, I made a TikTok about my coffee maker and like, why does it have so many likes on it? Like literally, I swear to God, the stupidest shit that I post gets the most likes on it. Like I'll like actually fucking try. I feel like a boomer with the FaceTime updates. I refuse to update my phone. I heard about it. I'm not doing it. I will actually try in a video and like really think about it and it'll get like, nothing. And then one like that, that I don't think about at all and is so dumb, does like amazing. So I need to just like stop trying because like, who cares? Um, yeah, the FaceTime updates have me feeling stupid as hell. I feel like Apple, I think Apple like used to be good and Apple like used to care about their customer a lot. But now I think Apple, like they know the fucking chokehold they have on us and they just like abuse us. Oh, so link to Nearpod. Here you go. Um, oh no, someone's have you listened to, 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 wait, what was the updates? What is this? I want to see this thread. Have you listened to podcast about how the green M&M got sexy starts the Spanish-American war. Yeah, link please. Please send the link to that because I need to know that. Now all Apple wants is money. Yeah, like I feel like Apple used to be better and like have good products and then they've just like slowly realized they have a chokehold over us and then they like just fuck us over and they kind of like get joy out of it. You know what I mean? Like they they like knowing that we have no power, you know? Um, I'm literally 21 and had to ask my sister how I can share my screen on FaceTime. I didn't even know you could share your screen on FaceTime. Okay, so U.S. interest grew paramount, however, in the following years, culminating in signing the Reciprocity Treaty of 1874. I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's like low-key boring. Um, but basically, we had like a good trade not good for them really we had a trade relationship with hawaii like they were we basically got special privileges to trade with them so like trading with us was like they kind of had to trade with us and they didn't really have a hundred percent of like the freedom to trade with other people my a push fixation is on the iran hostage crisis i need to learn more about that so we're gonna do some kind of like who is who stuff this is a king he was the last king of hawaii um and he lobbied for the reciprocity treaty he lost the support of a lot of people in the planter class the planter class was like kind of like upper middle class white people here give me one second Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, for real. Feminist Queen 99 for fucking real. Um, feel it in my soul. 
No, it's not him. He's not here. We don't live together. He's at his house. I'm going to go over there later, though. But anyway, this is one of the kings who was involved with that treaty. This is a queen. She's kind of like the most important figure here. She was the one that was in power when the U.S. took over, and like she was the one that they fucked over really bad. So she was from a high-ranking family, and she was like grew up in the missionary tradition, so she was deemed as like appropriate for the Hawaiian princess ship, whatever. Um, she was like super educated, had traveled all over the world, um, and then she got married to this guy, John Owen Dominius, who was like a white dude that was the son of a Boston sea captain. And he was an official in the Hawaiian government. So you can see that like, even before the U S took over, there was like Americans all up in that bitch. You know what I mean? Like even before we were fully taking over. Yeah. And let me send the near body gun in case anybody needs it. Okay. So in 1874, her brother was the chosen king, um, and then she became the um, like pre- bleh, bleh, bleh. she became the heir after some shit happened. People die, people whatever. You know what I mean? She's queen now. That's how monarchies work. People die, the next people come in charge. Over the next fourteen years, she was like doing her thing, going on world tours, all of that stuff. She was going all over the world. So my whole point in telling you all of this information about her is that like she was a respected world leader. Like she was the leader of her country. She had relationships with other people. She met with the president, with the queen of um, Great Britain, like all of these things. And then when the king died, she ascended to the throne. So it's like she is known as a real like world leader. So the fact that she got overthrown, like it's not like oh, this random person no one had ever heard of in this baby country. It's like, no, she had been around. Like, people knew that she was going to be the heir, and then people knew that she was the queen when this happened. So here are some pictures of her. Um, This is, like, a book about her. She really is a girl boss. Picture number two is, like, recolored. I don't think color photography was really that, like, there that way back then. Um, You can see fully a queen, fully in her moment. I love this picture of her. This is a painting. I'll leave it on number four. Yeah, four fucking real Americans all up in that bitch. That's a threat. Yeah, literally. Americans being all up in your government is a direct fucking threat against you in her girl boss era. Yeah, but then, you know, men did things, which was not very girl bossy. That dress is so beautiful. She really is. It's like, it's such a, like a, such a queen. Like, in the most literal sense. Very regal. Um, So, that was who that king before her was. That's Queen Leo Kalani. Lilo La Kalani. I think I'm saying that correctly. I looked it up and then immediately forgot because I have one brain cell. Now we're going to talk about who is Sanford Dole. This is the last who's who, and then we'll get to the story of what happened. So, Sanford Dole was born in 1844 in Hawaii. Leave Leave Queen Leo Kalani alone! Um... He fucked Sanford Dole. So he was born in Hawaii, but his parents were from like the mainland United States and they were Protestant Christian missionaries. So like white dude in Hawaii. Um, Most of the people that like took over, this was their case. They were born there. So they were like, I was born here. This is my land. But like their parents had moved there as, their parents had moved there as adults. So his mother died from complications a few days after his birth. I think she saw his energy and was like, let me get the fuck up out of here. That was actually very, very insensitive. Dying in childbirth is very sad. RIP to this woman. I don't know how, if she was a good person or not. She was a missionary, so probably not. But anyway, let's continue. Um, he was nursed by a native. Mm, that's fucked up. That's fucked up for a lot of reasons because like, I highly doubt she volunteered for that. You know what I mean? Like I highly doubt she was signing up to do that. I wasn't there, but I highly doubt that dark history yeah a couple people i don't know who that person with that podcast is but a lot of people commented that on my tiktok i need to listen to that um okay so then he married anna kate in 1873 it's so fucked up that half the time you have a kid it was like i will probably die but here's the baby gotta go (laughs) that's hardly how it was women used to die from childbirth like fucking constantly and now they still die from childbirth like a lot Okay, so he was married, and then he was commissioned as a notary public in Honolulu. 
Lou. He won elections in 84 and 86 to be a representative, and he was very active in securing the Constitution of 1887. The Constitution of 1887 took away a lot of power from Hawaiians, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I'm scared of childbirth now for that reason. Election. Yeah, I don't... Mm. We're, we're going to talk about voting and elections and all that stuff. Childbirth is terrifying, and like... So many terrible things can happen to you when you're pregnant. You can develop random allergies. This lady I used to work with was a pastry chef. That was literally her dream, was to be a pastry chef. And then she got pregnant and became allergic to eggs. And her doctor was like, oh, sometimes people develop allergies when they're pregnant. Your allergy will probably go away after you have the baby. And then it didn't. And she had to get a new career because she was dead ass, like became allergic to eggs and she literally had to get a new career and now she works in HR and she was like kind of a bitch when she worked in HR I'm gonna be honest the teeth shifting yeah and then your teeth can shift pregnancy is crazy your teeth can fall out because of a lack of calcium um that's concerning I don't like that see like every day I find new reasons to never get pregnant we have such bad mother mortality rate. It's like we're literally the richest country in the world. The United States is the Instagram model of countries. We're outside. We are really like glitz and glamour, but inside we're falling apart because the babies suck the nutrients out of your body. They're, are they parasites? I think they are. Okay, so is this dull like the pineapple people? Yes, it is dull like pineapple people. I'm going to explain it because it's a little more complicated than it just being like Sanford B. Dole was in charge of Dole. Babies are parasites confirmed. There's enough people on the planet. Don't have a kid unless you definitely want to. I definitely think I want to like be around kids. I don't know in what capacity. One of my dreams, if I had like a lot of money, would be to like build a house and then like kids that are about to age out of foster care, like adopt them when they're like 16, 17, and then like help them in that transition period. I think that's something that I would like take a lot of fulfillment out of. You know what I mean? Um, so I would like be a mud mother. I wouldn't make them call me mom though. Cause if you get adopted at 16, that's, that's like weird. Um, but yeah, I would love to do that. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. I love babies though. I really miss teaching toddlers, but yeah, oh, shit. Maybe one of these days. So let's get back on track because I keep getting distracted. So is this the Dole pineapple people? Kind of, this is from Dole's wiki page. So this is like literally about them from them. Um, the company, Toddlers are a trip. They're so funny. The company traces its origin to 1851 at the establishment of Castle and Cook by missionary Samuel North of Castle and Amos Starr Cook. Castle and Cook rapidly became one of the largest companies in Hawaii plantations, investing in shipping, railroad construction, sugar production, and seafood packing. Other, the other half of Dole's corporation was the corporation heritage was the pine, the Hawaiian Pineapple Company, founded in 1901 by James Dole. Sanford Dole is the cousin of James Dole. So these two guys are cousins. One of them's in the government and one of them owns part of the pineapple company that is Dole. Pineapples that still exist that we all probably have seen at the grocery store. Um, why isn't this working? Memes, questions, jokes, comments. What do we think Dole is going to do? Does anyone want to take a prediction as to what Dole is going to do? What are the Dole pineapple people going to do? Do we think it's going to be nice and kind? Hmm, probably not. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Slavery. Yeah, I'm sure that's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I worked in retail, a lady told me her pregnancy caused her balding and baby girl was on the verge of a cul-de-sac head. Isn't a cul-de-sac head when it's like bald like that? Like, is that right? Cringe alert. Is that about me? Shocker, shocker, they're going to fuck over Native Hawaiians. I know, literally so shocking. If you have, like, a meme you want to put or anything like, like that, you can join your pod if you do. Um, I have a yearbook from 1933 Hawaii. They have a whole page dedicated to Dole. That's crazy. Dole equals bad. No, Dole is cringe. Thank you. I'm willing to bet there's some corporate grin coming. Yeah, for real. Male pattern balding. Is that a cul-de-sac? You get diabetes while you're pregnant. Ugh. It's fucking brutal out here. Jesus. Thanks, Maisie, for the follow. Thanks, Paige, for the follow. Um, I'll give people a couple more seconds to add to this if they want to. It's like the banana takeover thing we did in Latin America. Yeah, if you don't know about that one, it's, like, really bad. 
my mom had diabetes while pregnant. I like how we're having two conversations at once, which is nice. Pregnant. Pregnant. Am I pregnant? You guys know that video where it's like the different Yahoo answers of am I pregnant? I gave my mother diabetes. Did she deserve it? Am I pregnant? Pregnant? Am I? Pregnant. <laughs> Imagine if someone joined and it was just me reading these. Are you pregnant? Pugnant. The lady on TikTok who got the milk sack in her armpit really fucked me up. Wait, what? Who got a milk sack in their armpit? I'm never getting pregnant. If I ever get pregnant, delete us the fetus. I'm not doing that. And like, I have internalized misogyny, so I really value like the way I look. I'm sorry. And like being pregnant, I know would mess me up mentally. I know it. Because anytime I'm physically uncomfortable or I look different, it literally fucks me up mentally so bad. Is the replay available on the stream immediately once you end it? It should be. It might take a couple of seconds, but maybe. Gestational diabetes. If you don't feed constantly the mink stores in your armpits because the, the milk stores in your armpits because it has nowhere to go. Oh my God. And, and then like some people get that thing, mastitis, where it's like, ah, oh, pregnancy is terrifying. You can get tumors. You can get tumors inside the tumor's teeth and hair will grow. What? Why? 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 Why do the teeth and... I don't like that. Uh. Milk blocks scare me. I hate the way they look when they come out. Yeah, it looks like a booger, but like giant and like white. Is that thunder? There's, there's a storm of breathing. Stem cells is why, but also, oh my god, why? Every, like, you could tell me anything about being pregnant, and it sounds like a horror movie, and I'll believe you. Because, like, everything just sounds fake. Why do we keep talking about things that give us anxiety? Because we hate ourselves. Because we literally hate ourselves, that's why. Let's get back into learning, though. Okay, so the government of Hawaii was overthrown in a coup. Basically, what happened is in... 1884, um, the Missionary Party strictly ran all candidates as independent candy, independent party candidates to ensure that missionaries were on the independent ticket. A committee of nine was formed um, to assume leadership of this party. The committee of nine were staunchly loyal to the Missionary Party um, and had missionary values. So like those white people that came to spread religion, that's who this is. Um, they won 13 seats and the minor and was the minority party in the Hawaii legislature. So you can see like a really small group of people is really starting to like gain more power the missionary party that's not very separation of church and state of them yeah literally they're like mm, we get it's fine to violate it if it's our religion it's just not okay when it's yours um so following the elections the committee reconvened now they're called the committee of 13 due to the change in the number of people and their intent was to make the independent party the majority leader of the legislature and at the end of the elections they won 10 seats and net loss of three so sanford b dole was on the committee of nine and on the committee of 13 so that guy whose cousin owns the pineapple place that is like ben gaining power he's on this committee that's like trying to take over the hawaiian government through like elections that are probably rigged and unfair but like they're trying to do it in like the kind of like sneaky legal way nepotism it's nepotism so the hawaiian league in 1887 the committee of 13 formed a secret society called the hawaiian league the hawaiian league is actually who like started all this shit but i wanted to show you it didn't just like come up out of nowhere it started from people running in these elections together so there's no official records because obviously if you're doing something fucking shady you're not going to write it down that you're going to be doing something shady so the group was headed by lawyers and businessmen you mentioned a thunderstorm and i was looking out the window and was confused and then i remembered this isn't zoom university <laughs> 13 that famously unlucky number yeah for fucking real Okay, so it was mostly businessmen of non-Aboriginal and non-Indigenous naturalized United States citizens. So a lot of them were like Americans and like Europeans who were American citizens and things like that. So although politicians changed their name of the party from missionary to reform, they did go through a rebrand. They were like, mm, missionary is giving 
having bad vibes. Let's go with reform. It's always the businessmen. Um, many wanted to become a part of the United States, not just reform the monarchy. Like originally they were like, Hey guys, we want to reform the monarchy, really chill vibes, really casual vibes. We're not trying to do anything crazy. But then behind closed doors, they were like, we should just be a part of the United States. We should just like fucking take over the government and make it a part of the United States. Cause then we can make some more fucking money. And that was just their plan. So the Hawaiian league came in control of the Honolulu rifles this was about 200 armed men they were non-native men they were locals but they weren't natives that's an important distinction um so again like this political group that's trying to say like oh we're just reforming we're just doing this is now in control of this armed militia essentially and they're trying to be like look we're in the elections we're so civilized and businessmen and play by the rules and yada 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 but it's like if you're playing by the rules why do you have this group of 200 crazy people with weapons that you're in charge of um the men who f the men that they were in charge of of the honolulu rifles fought under the command of an annexationist an annexationist this Von Lee Ashford, that's someone that is in favor of becoming like a part of America. So like the United States annexing means like to legally and officially take over. So an annexationist is someone who wants the United States to do that and is fighting for that. So the Hawaiian League used the Honolulu rifles to force that king. Remember how we talked about there was a, a king before Queen Leo Kalani? Um, this is King Kala. Kuoa, I think is how you pronounce that. They forced him to sign the Bayonet Constitution. The Bayonet Constitution basically was a document that like took away a lot of his power and took away a lot of the native rights to the land. And it gives the vote to foreign land owners. So like they literally held him at gunpoint and like forced him to sign this. When the queen took over in 1891, she tried to like get rid of this and restore power, which made this group like really pop off even again. So do do do. This is another meme that I'm proud of. Um, I already put this one on TikTok. Native Hawaiians, we should be able to vote because this literally is our land. White land owning foreigners. You are wrong. Bayonet constitution that's very heavy handed foreshadowing. It wasn't even foreshadowing because they came in and he signed it at gunpoint. That's how it got the name is he was held at gunpoint to actively sign it. Like he, was, he did not sign that consensually. I don't know what this meme is from. I think it's from like the Monopoly, like PS whatever game. It's from Thomas and Friends. Oh, okay. I thought it was the Monopoly man. The fat controller laughed. You are wrong. The children so like the train. Yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> um, so the like, let me go back. The Honolulu rifles turned into the Committee of Safety. They had a rebrand as well. That's the thing. A lot of these shady groups change their names a lot to make it harder for people to tell what they're doing. So they, the Committee of Safety is the one that overthrew the Hawaiian government, which, like, that's fucking ironic. It's called the Committee of Safety. Why do you have all these guns? And the reason that they overthrew the government is because the queen was trying to put in that new constitution. So the queen was trying to have a new constitution that was going to, like, limit the power of these foreigners and was going to give more power to the queen and was going to give like more land to the Hawaiians because obviously like those are her people and she was the queen of them so she wants to do a good job so that's why she wanted to sign that um and they freaked the fuck out the basically the committee of safety their stated goals these were like their official goals were to dispose the queen overthrow the monarchy and seek Hawaii's annexation to the United States like this shit was planned so Oh, January 16th, 18, how dare she do her job, I know. January 16th, 1893, Charles Wilson was tipped off to the coup. A coup was like violently taking over the government. Um, he was a marshal of the kingdom. He requested warrants to arrest the 13. So remember the committee of 13? Now it's the committee of safety. He requested warrants to arrest the 13 member committee of safety and put the kingdom under martial law. Cause he was like, Hey, they're going to try and overthrow the government. We should arrest them and put it under martial law. Um, but all of the people on the uh, committee of safety had like really strong political ties to the U S government minister, John L Stevens. So the requests weren't like, granted like he didn't get to arrest those people when he wanted to because like 
basically those people had a lot of political clout. So the U.S. government, even though Charles Wilson was like, there's going to be a coup, it's going to be violent, they're going to try and take over the government, our government knew about that and was like, "Mm, we're not going to arrest the people that are going to do that. It's fine. We'll figure it out later. So like the U.S. government wasn't necessarily the one like on the ground in this moment but like they knew about this shit and they were condoning it so after a failed negotiation wilson began to collect his men for the confrontation because he was like this is going to pop off so i need to be ready um him and the captain of the the royal household guard samuel nowlin rallied a force of 496 men who were kept at hand to protect the king so it's like they knew it was coming they were trying to be prepared all of that So the revolution ignited on January 17th. Only a day later, you can see, like, this is quick with it. Damn, history really does repeat itself. That's the truest statement. On January 17th, a policeman was shot and wounded when they were trying to stop the wagon that was carrying weapons to the Honolulu rifles. So those Honolulu rifles are those armed men that the Committee of Safety is, like, in charge of. They were trying to get weapons delivered, and a policeman was like, hey, you can't fucking do that. We're watching you. And then they shot him. Um, And the Committee of Safety feared that the shooting was going to bring government forces to rout out the conspirators and stop the coup before it could begin. So they were like, oh, damn, we shot this police officer and now they're going to arrest all of us. So instead, they garrisoned. I can't remember what garrisoned mean. I looked it up in preparation for this and then immediately forgot. Um, Oh, it means like to station in a particular place. So all of the Honolulu rifles came like across from the palace and basically waited for the queen's response. They were like, if we just come up like in front of the palace with our guns, she'll have to do something and we'll just be ready for it. You can change your Google color. Yeah, you can change it. All right. So the queen makes changes to the government structure to benefit her people. Some white dudes who own plantations. If you want to join Nairpod. Oh, fuck. Now I lost the link. Never mind. Whatever. Um, another meme. I told you. More memes today. We never learn. No, we really do never learn from history. Ever. All right. Here's another meme. I didn't make this one. I found this one on the internet, but it's a good one. Oh, boy. I love being out in the middle of nowhere. So 13... 13 foreign guys can't plot to overthrow the rulers and annex the country. Knock, knock. It's the United States. It's the United States of America. Okay. So, as these events were unfolding, the Committee of Safety expressed concern for the safety and property of American residents in Honolulu. So, as there's a ton of guns across the street from the Queen, they're like, you know what should be the number one priority? random safety and property of people that aren't even here right now of the american residents throughout the city um so the united states government minister john l stevens advised these supposed threats to non-combatant american lives and property by the committee of safety obliged their request and summoned a company of the uniformed u.s marines from the uss boston so basically the committee of d was like hey pull up with the u.s military that meme is from the history of japan So yeah, so basically the committee of safety that's like trying to illegally take over the government was like, hey, shit's popping off and some Americans can die. So can you bring the Marines here? And the U.S. government was like, oh my God, absolutely. We're on the way. Um, So the U.S. Boston landed in Honolulu Harbor and came ashore well armed, but under orders of neutrality, which like neutral but well armed very interesting the sailors and marines did not enter the palace grounds or take over any buildings and never fired a shot but the presence served to intimidate royalist defenders because obviously like if you're supposed to defend the queen but then the u.s military is there on the side of the people trying to attack the queen you're gonna be a little nervous about that you're gonna like feel a type of way marines stay meddling in things they don't belong in one time i briefly briefly dated a marine He had issues. Um, So the injunction to prevent fighting of any kind made it impossible for the monarchy to protect itself due to the queen's desire to avoid the collision of armed forces. I lost my place. And perhaps a loss of life for her subjects since after some deliberation and the urging of her advisors and friends, she ordered her forces to surrender. So it was not like a violent scenario, like necessarily shots were not fired, but she was intimidated by guns and by the U.S. military into essentially surrendering. Um, The Honolulu Rifles 
took over government buildings, disarmed the royal guard, and declared a provisional government. So the people that were like literally staging the coup are the ones that are in charge now. It wasn't violent because she cared about her people. Exactly. She like kind of saw the direction it was going and wanted to do this like the least violent way possible, which is why she surrendered like pretty early on, which I do really respect. That would be a very difficult decision to make. Um, but in the moment, I'm sure it saved a ton of lives. Why isn't this working? Are we surprised that this happened? Did we know about this? Did you ever learn about this in school? My nose is stuffy. Hope I don't have COVID. Whip, laugh, love. Um, if you want to add to Nearpod, let me put the link in the thing. If you won't. Yeah, I'm curious to see if people learned about this in school or not. Because I definitely did not. I taught about it, but I didn't learn about it as a student. I learned about it like from the internet. Nope, shout out to the education system of Ohio. God. Oh my God, why do I have so many DMs on Instagram right now? I think it's so funny when high school boys like try and flirt with me on the internet, like random ones. I'm like, do you think I'm gonna reply? Like, do you think me as a whole adult is going to be like, oh, I saw your volleyball pics and I had to message you. Like, the fuck are you talking? Why would you message me? What do you think was going to happen? The queen is more honorable than any U.S. politician as far as I can tell. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, is the chat not updating again? I hate when it does this. I learned about it from YouTube. There's an Adam Ruins Everything video about this. It's really good. I would show it to my students every year. I didn't know how connected the rest of the world was to Hawaii at that time. Yeah, like a lot of people think that it's just like its own little area that like no one pays attention to, but it was like very much um, its own country, all of that. Here, let me fix this chat because it keeps fucking deleting itself. <laughs> okay hopefully i fixed it hopefully it's working now it always scares me when it drops to zero views because i think that i like got canceled or my internet exploded or something like that i learned like most of what i know from youtube man you can hear like little children screaming in my hallway apartment living this is this is the real streaming right here those other streamers what do they know about this what do they know about this lifestyle okay Okay, a new government. So the Committee of Safety issued the following proclamation to be read aloud on January 17th. And it says, first, the Hawaiian monarchical system of the government is officially abrogated, meaning like done, it's over, all the way done. Like that monarchical system of government is dead. A provisional government, provisional means like temporary kind of, um, provisional government and management of public affairs and protection of public peace is hereby established and to exist until terms of union with the United States of America have been negotiated and agreed upon. So it was like from the jump, they wanted to be a part of the United States. Someone asked a good question. How has the U S influenced the governments of Guam and other territories? It varies a lot place to place. I don't know a ton about Guam, but it varies a lot territory to territory. And like overall, we just exploit them and give them the short end of the stick. And then they don't get to make many decisions for themselves is like a summary, I would say. We just full on bullied them. Yeah, we really did. So the Hawaiian League unofficially adopted the American flag to appeal to the U.S. and promote annexation. The flag was raised over the palace the day that like they overthrew the queen, which I think is so fucking disrespectful like to everybody to put your flag there like that's I mean all of it's disrespectful obviously but like you couldn't even wait 24 hours to put the flag up like you had to do it right fucking then um the flag was eventually lowered by James Blount because he said it spread a false presumption that the U.S. had taken control when the U.S. had not I think that's really valid um that he took that down because the U.S. had not taken control so why are you flying a U.S. flag so the flag was just spitting on the grave of Hawaii. That's the best way to describe it. That's how it feels is it's like spitting on the grave. Like you didn't have to do that, but you did. So Dole was named the president of the provisional government of Hawaii. So remember the pineapple guy and the like other plantation owners wanted the power because they wanted to be a part of the United States so they could make more money. 
that guy's cousin is now the president. So that's how the pineapple company is like connected to this because they funded a lot of it or like influenced a lot of it and were a part of it through that familial connection and because they were a small group of like white elites in this area. Oh my God, we're so shocked at this revelation. Yeah, literally. Um, so he became the provisional uh, head of president of the provisional government um, and was recognized within 48 hours by all nations with diplomatic ties of the kingdom of Hawaii. So that's why like the U.S., Great Britain, Canada, like all these countries that had had relationships with Hawaii, like did nothing to protect Hawaii. Like literally immediately afterwards, they were like, yeah, you're in charge now. Like they didn't try and defend the queen at all. I also wonder how much like misogyny plays into that and how like they probably didn't respect her as a leader, as a world leader, because she was a woman um, and because it was like a queen situation. And I bet like if it had been different, they might have reacted differently, if you get what I'm saying. Um, where was I? So, yeah, he forms this basically committee that's controlling the government. This is a pic of them right there. All those dudes look very white to me. They, none of them really look like they are native to Hawaii at all. So Sanford B. Dole's mommy issues manifesting as him overthrowing a queen. Remember, his mom passed away when he was a baby. And I stand by this. Men with mommy issues take it out on the whole world. Never let a man punish their mother through you. And I really think that because he grew up motherless, he was probably had a weird relationship with women. And then having a female leader there, it like really triggered him or whatever. I really believe that. Do I have evidence for it? No. But I believe it. Maybe I'll forgive my mom for all the pain she caused me. Never mind. I had to, I'm really wondering if anyone looks at my search history at work, I'm really fucked because I had to Google mommy issue memes and like, that's not something I should have Googled there. You know what I mean? Men with mommy issues are scary. Bro, a man with mommy issues almost destroyed me. I got, I barely got out of there unscathed, if we're being honest. I'm a survivor. Um... Yeah, men with mommy issues are all insane. It's fucking crazy. Also, shout out to everybody that's been sticking around the whole time. We're about to play a game in a couple seconds. At least girls with daddy issues are nice and funny, right? So I read this article the other day about reverse daddy issues, which is what I think I have. And it's like when your dad has like spoiled you so much and been so nice to you that like you're surprised when men aren't that way. And it makes you really naive because like obviously that's how you should act. And that's what I think. Like, I get so surprised when someone doesn't act that way. I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong with them? I'm like, I, it couldn't be me. It has to be them. <laughs> my boyfriend's really nice to me, though. He, he spoils the shit out of me, so it's working pretty well. It's a good dynamic. If you're like that, you just need to find someone that, like, wants to spoil you and it'll work. Easier said than done, but you know what I mean. Okay, so the annexation of Hawaii. Because, remember, at this point, we have a provisional government. It is not a part of the United States, but we have a provisional government. Now we're talking about how it became a part of the United States. President Grover Cleveland sent a new U.S. minister to Hawaii to try and restore the queen. So, like, he was like, yo, what the fuck is going on there? Um, but Dole refused to step aside. And to me, like, kill him. You know what I mean? I'm so late to class and I forgot my tardy pass. Sydney Morjohn... How dare you? The only reason I'll, ex I'll excuse it is because you're a one-month subscriber. That's the only time you're allowed to be late to class. You can still play the game, though. Um, there are practically no men in my family. I just don't like being around very many men. So you expect normalcy. I have high expectations. High expectations are a gift. Okay, so President Cleveland tried to restore the queen, but then when Sanford Dole was like, no, I'm not going to step aside. Grover Cleveland was like, ugh, whatever, never mind. And, like, you could have fucking tried harder, you know what I mean? So Cleveland was unwilling to overthrow this government by force, so it was kind of just in this limbo for a little bit where they had this provisional government that Dole was in charge of. Um, and then President McKinley negotiated a treaty with the Republic of Hawaii, um, and then the Spanish-American War happened, and we were like, ooh, we want to use Hawaii as a naval base because we have all these ships and we're fighting this war now. So we kind of, like, officially made it a state partially because of war and partially because of imperialism, which I guess are, like, one and the same and go hand in hand. Um, but, yeah, so that's how it officially became a state. So that's what I mean. Like, it wasn't overnight that it became a state. It was in 1959 that it became a state. Like, it was 
kind of in this awkward provisional stage, and then it was a territory, and then it was a state in 1959 um, after, you know, we needed to have more states and all the things. So here's another meme. I didn't make this one. This is an internet one. Corporate needs you to find the difference between these pictures. To the U.S. government, they're the same picture. Do you think Puerto Rico will ever be a state? I have no idea. I have truly no clue. Um, yeah, couldn't tell you. I like this meme. This is one of my favorite ones. Da, 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 da. Mad, why do I have so many notifications on Twitter? Oh, this is cute. Someone tweeted a pic and they have like the Nearpod and they have like two devices at one time. I'm obsessed with this. Okay, let me focus. Sorry, we have a game to play. Okay, here's more memes again. Um, a literal coup. The U.S. military. You son of a bitch, I'm in. I read something that the ballots for Hawaii becoming a state. Oh, wait, shit. Um, for becoming a state didn't even have the option to be independent, which violated some UN rule. Yeah, that's literally 100% true. Our government is a joke. True. You cackled at the last meme. Good. That means I'm doing my job. <laughs> is this the game? Yeah. Okay. This is the game. If you want to play this game, it's like questions about all the stuff that I just talked about. Here's the Nearpod in the chat. If you want to play the game, um, let me... We'll do the beach one because it's Hawaii. I'm not going to play the noises um, because they make like a feedback noise. We'll do the beach one because it's Hawaii. If you want to play the game, here's the Nearpod in the chat. Feel free to join. It's questions about everything that we just talked about. The whole thing's multiple choice. Your little characters will climb up this hill on your screen. It'll be great. On my screen, it looks kind of stupid. I wish it looked better. I missed the old layout for that. Um, actually, I should email them about that because they upped my participant limit, so I bet they can restore that. When January 6th happened, I called it a coup, and my dumbass thought it was coop like chicken coop. I thought that too at first. Okay, go ahead and pick your little character, people. I'll start the game in a couple seconds. There's 12 people on there. It's impressive. 12 of you made it through the whole thing. Nice, nice. <laughs> I should give away something, like an Amazon card or something like that. Once I get paid from subscribers, I'll start doing that. Well, not Amazon, because we don't fuck with Amazon. Uh, but we don't, uh, like, everyone's bad. So I don't know. Okay, I'm going to give it another, like, 30 seconds. And then we will play. Do Visa if you can, easy middle, yeah. Can you do that digitally? You probably can. I'm sure you can. You have to be able to do that digitally, especially with COVID. I'm sure they set that shit up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. If you're not in the game yet, or if you want to join the game still, you totally still can. It'll let you join late. Oh, I don't have my sound on. Or just like Venmo. Yeah, I should do that. I can just PayPal you. I'll just PayPal you $5 if you win. I should start doing that. My computer is breathing so loud right now. Like truly my computer is so done. I think I selected the wrong right answer to this. Sorry about that. I should get fired. This is definitely B and I definitely selected A. You know what? That's just part of the low budget streaming. Like, you get what you pay for. <laughs> I keep thinking it was my computer breathing. No, it's my computer. My computer's the one breathing. One day if I ever like make money, I'll um, buy a, like, a bigger computer that's like better to do this on. But for now, we are getting the MacBook Pro. 
which is a very expensive computer. I'm not sure why it can't handle this. I feel like it should be able to for how fucking how much it cost. Does anyone, um, when I say DJ Roomba, does that, does that strike a chord with people? Drop the beat. This is the automatic Nearpod music. Is is this playlist? They sh I probably on SoundCloud. Love that dude. Yeah, Parks. That used to be my comfort show. Parks and Rec was absolutely my comfort show. Who was in power when the bayonet constitution occurred? This is a hard one. See see which you bitches was paying attention. See, and it like shows me answers like it's not a vibe have you seen abbott elementary yet i have the episode that was on yesterday i'm watching it tonight i'm actually being interviewed so this is crazy to me can i talk about this she didn't tell me not to talk about this so i'm assuming it's fine i'm being interviewed by buzzfeed about what i think about abbott elementary and like buzzfeed is in her flop era but i just felt like i had to say yes because like i used to watch quinna brunson on buzzfeed as a teenager all the time she was my favorite buzzfeed creator i loved buzzfeed i would watch all their youtube videos i was so into it so the fact that like buzzfeed is interviewing me about her show is just like so poetic to me even though she is in her flop era lady like was so cool like BuzzFeed was really so influential for the time, you know? So I'm excited. That's tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm doing, so I'm doing that tomorrow. And then tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time, like 7, 7.30ish, I think, p.m. Eastern time, me and Type B teacher are doing um, a TikTok live together about Taylor Swift. I don't really know what we're talking about. She kind of like organizes it and then teaches this stuff to me. But yeah, we're talking about Taylor Swift on TikTok live tomorrow if you want to watch that. I'm like booked and bothered. I'll tell you one thing, booked and bothered. Abbott Elementary is also my new favorite sitcom. Drop the article when it comes out, absolutely will. So sad the season finale is next week. I thought the season finale was yesterday. Is there another episode? I thought it was yesterday was the season finale. Will you tweet about the Taylor Swift live? Because I'll forget, yeah. I'll try to remember to tweet about it. I just really hate the layout of this game so much. Maybe I'll start doing, um, maybe I'll start doing something else instead, like one of the other games. Oh, it's just showing me correct, incorrect, none, but still, I just don't like that. It's just not a vibe. The old one, it used to show like, the old one, and why is it being weird? The old one used to show like, the student view and then like all the little people climbing up the mountain besties i'm not doing well in this game <laughs> starlight falls it's okay we've all been there we've all been that girl that's not doing well in the game it's a hard game i made it hard on purpose i'm trying to challenge you to be your best selves no i'm just kidding i just flexed a little too hard for no reason it's almost done though you got like four or five questions left Man. I love doing this. This is so fun. Like, it's super wild to me that I, like, am doing this much stuff and have zero, zero, like, like, I'm always doing something, you know? Like, I'm never just, like, doing nothing because now I'm doing, like, streaming and I have a lot of other stuff going on. It's, like, crazy to me that I'm living this way, but I'm having so much fun. Like, I'm not tired after these at all. Like, you can tell I'm on fucking 100 right now. I always oversleep the night after I do these, though, because then I, like, knock the fuck out. But... I love these, they give me so much energy. I think it's so, so, so fun. Okay, there's like three questions left. What year did the coup happen? Coop, coup, coup, whatever. Thanks, Ornamental Hermit. I'm glad you're enjoying it too. Anime Fan 1567, thanks for the follow. Maisie, thanks for the follow. Blue Guava, Pukara. Anna Lot, Lot. I love a game because I feel like I'll remember the info now because I have one brain cell. I also have one brain cell and all my students were in the same boat. All of us had such bad attention span issues from being like just always on our phones and just like living in this world. And so we always had to play games because otherwise they will forget everything. When was the Bayonet Constitution signed? Ooh, maybe if I do it in presentation view. 
I'm gonna start doing it in presentation view. I don't wanna do it right now because it's in the middle of the game and I'm afraid it'll fuck it up. But I wanna try it next time. Or I'm gonna try it on the next slide. Date questions are the death of me. Yeah, I felt like, so I would, as a teacher, I would never do date questions ever, but I felt like in these, it was really challenging and I wanted to see which people remembered it. So I purposely put them in there because they're hard. But if it's not the vibe, I'll stop doing them because they are also the death of me. I hate them, I can never remember them. So I, whenever people in the chat are like, wait, when was this? I always have to like look back because I never remember the years. Why did the US take over Hawaii? Spoiler alert, all the answers are right. No matter what you select, it'll count it right. <laughs> because all four of these things are true. You have one question after this. What was the Committee of Safety's goal? Wait, that is not too niche at all. This might be too niche, but I want to deep dive into the historical inaccuracies of American girl dolls. We can absolutely do that. I really wish I was the other Jessica playing this right now. I was about to ask, I was like, is this the same Jessica that's been like crushing it the whole time? And um, Jessica is a founder one month subscriber. We just need to shout out Jessica in the chat for that. And then we need to shout out Jessica B on the game for winning, period. Is that you, Leal? And then Orly is two, Gabby is three, Lena is four, Slay is five, Katie is six, KB is eight, and other Jessica is seven, OMG Reese, and then you can see everybody's little names on here. Oh my god, like so many people are high key participating. Second is pretty good for not paying attention to half of it. I will not take that as an insult, and second is very good. I'm imp impressed. Okay, so Hawaii is still facing a lot of issues. Native Hawaiians are really being um pushed out like a lot of tourists are moving to the area and like people from uh, american mainland are moving there especially with like remote work and covid and oh, i was cleaning it's okay i'm not offended i would listen to me like a podcast too um but yeah there's still a lot of issues in hawaii especially with covid and remote work tons of people have been moving there so like housing costs are increasing really 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 dramatically and it's just like really difficult for hawaiians and that are like historically who have been there, their families have been there and homelessness is on the rise and the majority of the people in Hawaii that are experiencing homelessness are native Hawaiians um, and wages there are just like not keeping up fast enough. Basically like the problems we're seeing everywhere are just really exacerbated there and there's like a very limited amount of space. So in terms of housing, that makes things more difficult. So just because I spent almost two hours talking about this and obviously like learning about it i wanted to at least give like a resource and credit to people there that are there right now so i did some research and the feel free if you know of an organization that is like doing great work or whatever feel free to drop it but the hawaii the hawaii people's funds fund is an older group it's a grassroots group that basically the way that their function their like their money functions is like if you donate to them they give grants to locals to do different things. So like they have like $10,000 grants you can apply for and someone had like um, like a food drive in their community, like a food center and things like that. Like it's a very grassroots and very like local based and things like that, which is why I really liked it because I felt like those are the most effective groups. And I also like, I read the reviews on Facebook. There was a couple nonprofits. One of them was a lot bigger but I couldn't find anything that they were doing. Like it was like policy research and education, but I was like, what services are you providing? So the Hawaii People's Fund was the group that I found that appeared to be providing the most on the ground services, judging by their Facebook pictures and reviews and stuff like that. So this QR code will take you to um, their donate page. Oh, I should have had it ready. Here, I have an idea. Do -do. Do -do -do. I can send it in the chat. Give me one second. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'll send the link in the chat. I wanted to visit and experience actual Hawaiian culture, but I don't want to now because of the issues that tourism have caused. Yeah, I have some family in Hawaii. My, I have a, my mom's cousin. Basically, like, she went through a lot in her life and, like, retired super, super young and had family money. So she bought a house there and just, like, lives and has her, like, garden and her chickens and just, like, lives that way. Um, where I, am like, have been meaning to go visit her for years, but, like, I don't really want to just be, like, another person going to Hawaii, but also I feel like it'd be a little different because I'm staying with someone who, like, literally built their house there, like, 50 years ago. So I don't know. Um, also, I can't afford it is the other aspect of that. And let me send this link in the chat, the donation link. Oh, thank you. Jessica did it, but here it is again. Thank you, thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. For some reason, it's not updating on the page, but whatevs. Now I watch vlogs from Native Hawaiians to experience it the best I can. Yeah, big mood. Okay. Um, that's the last thing that I have. The next slide, it had a spot for questions and then the same QR code again. But if you have a question, feel free to just put it in the chat. Thank you for coming. I really enjoyed this topic. It was good to learn about this. I like doing like less information, more memes. I think I'm going to stick it to that way. The chat froze again, hating life. Let me update the chat right now um, so that I can see your questions. I'll hang out for a couple more minutes if anybody has questions or just wants to hang out and chat or whatevs. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There we go. I fixed it. Can we drop memes real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Here. Here's the collaborate board thing. If you want to drop memes, wrong link. I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to drop memes, here's the Nearpod link. You can definitely drop the memes. I'll hang out for a couple more minutes. Yeah, drop the memes. Sovereign Hawaii, the 13 fuckers. <laughs> oh, God, these are always so funny. I'm taking screenshots of these and putting them on Twitter, just so you know. I know I could save them, but this is faster, and then it, you won't see all my other files. Thank you for dropping the memes. Appreciate. But, yeah, I'll hang out on here for a couple more minutes. I need to upload this to YouTube as well, I'm trying to get better about being timely about that. OMG, thank you. I love this. You're the first streamer I actually enjoy watching. Thank you, OMG, OMGs, whatever that is. Um... I like streaming a lot. I'm having a fun time. My views have been kind of like up and down and weird, but I really am enjoying it. And I like making the stuff, you know, like I like making the content. Love that meme format. Yeah, for real. This chat is still like continuously freezing and it is late. So I'm going to hop off in a moment. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Oh shit, who just texted me? How far in advance do you pick stream topics? Not very far in advance. So I have my stream topic picked for today's the 6th. I'll be doing another history stream on the 13th. I don't have a topic picked for that one yet. And then my one on the 20th, it's 420. So we're going to be doing like the history of marijuana and the war on drugs and stuff like that. So like I kind of just pick them based on what's going on. Like this one, I didn't pick the topic until Monday. I made this on Monday and that's when I picked the topic. So if you ever have a topic, feel free to send it my way because pick based on vibes. Yeah. Feel free to send it my way because like sometimes I pick far in advance, but sometimes I don't it just kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this. This was fun. Have a great night. Thank you for doing this. I learned a lot of his from your history streams. Thank you. I love educating and teaching the public. All right. Have a good night. Make a decision. Sleep tight. Eat a vegetable. Drink some water. Love you.